what actually goes into like designing the enemies for something like this? Because obviously, I I only saw probably like the first two enemy mm. types. I saw the regular horde sort of demons, and then the the big dudes who slap you and then you die. Um, yeah. But what else is present in the game at this point, and sort of like what what really goes into concepting something like this? So in terms of designing a demon, uh, something that we really considered first is like, again, the universe that they exist in. How do these demons come to be? Why, why are they the way they are? And that sort of informs all of your, your initial referencing mm -hmm. for how you construct them. Um, so we sort of went away and did a bunch of world building and came up with the answers for those questions. Um, and then started to push, again, like what I just mentioned about how do you have consistent wave evolution that, that feels right to the player. Um, identifying sort of body proportions, you know, sort of style of decay or uh, body um, sort of gore, for example. Um, and then we sort of bring all of those references together in a bank uh, that we give off to an artist alongside a brief of saying this enemy needs to, to do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, we then go through like an initial round of concepting where where they just put out a load of ideas with with drastically different sort of interpretations of the the references. And then from there, we sort of pick out a few pieces. Oh, we really like this head design. Um, that piece of how you draw that arm is really good. So let's reference that again. And then you go into stage two where it's like, okay, we've got the style established. Now let's find the one that we're going to do a, a turnaround of. So you get front, side, back uh, perspectives done. Um, and yeah, you've got that. And then you do sort of a final color version of a demon that then gets given to an artist um, so that they can create in 3D and realize. Right. Yeah, so it's it's quite a long process from concept to in the game gold standard, mm -hmm. uh, especially for an enemy like this sort of like our, our core uh, horde enemy. Mm -hmm. it takes a few months to say the least, and you know as as one of the ones we're we're building on top of our pipeline at the minute as well. There's always back and forth and establishing things um, for the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely takes a good amount of time. With the um the regular horde enemy, is are they just like the same enemy, or is there some variation between them? So it's interesting in in the version that you can play on itch right now, mm -hmm. um the base mesh, the base body of the demons are the same. Sure. Um, but then the the their skin tone, their right, uh, right. That's what I was demonic getting, yeah. sigils on their bodies, and the horns, the shackles, um, on their their wrists and their ankles mm -hmm. are all generated at runtime and it's, it's actually a really good point that you bring this up because last year when we were working on that version of the demon i was like oh no we've got 16 billion possible variations of demon in the game it's, it's amazing it's amazing but you know in practice when you actually start playing and you're you're looking at those demons yeah. over and over round after round there actually isn't enough uh silhouette change um that really actually makes somebody go oh those those are unique Mm -hmm. um so we've completely changed our process now of how we're approaching that um where instead of generating random attachments you could say on onto demons when they when they spawn it's now we're we're sort of working towards a set of uh while similar bespokely unique uh like base horde enemies mm -hmm. so one might have a completely different head uh completely different set of like spikes and and dismemberment sort of qualities about them but across the board, they're all still of the same class of demon, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Because I think so of a the game... process becomes more involved. Because I think of a game like um, Dynasty Warriors, for example. Like you're swinging through hundreds of enemies. Like, y y you know, it's not a impo super important detail because you're gonna sort of forget what they look like v relatively quickly. But if everything that's running at you looks like a copy-paste of the exact same model. It just ends up looking cheaper. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's something that we've noticed, and we're working really hard behind the scenes to make sure that the, the base horde is uh, bespokely different and unique across across the sort of board. So mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'll, I'll reference it this way as well. Like COD Zombies, for example, mm -hmm. they've got the liberty where they can dress their, their right. horde in different sets of clothing. But they all sort of look similar, but like next to each other, they are unique. And it's like, how do you do that with a naked demon? Um, and that's something that a design challenge that we've been sort of looking into recently as well. Right. So yeah, like I sort of said, completely bespoke heads, body types with different levels of sort of like gore and spikes all coming out of them to create the illusion of um, that sort of like clothes motif uh, again to sort of give that sort of like differentiate differentiation between all the base demons. But I assume also making them similar enough where 
you can tell that they are the same enemy type, and you're not worrying about a new mechanic that Absolutely. is going to... Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's such a design challenge to do that, to not push it too far at the same time as well. Um, because we've got a, a new enemy type that we're actually working on right now called the Bloater, mm -hmm. um, which basically is is a lesser demon, the, the base horde enemy, but then they've got like huge growths all over the side of their body. Um, and that is bespokely different from any of the others to indicate that that has additional mechanics um, mm. to, to fight against you with. Right. Yeah. Right, because it's easy enough to distinguish when there's like a size difference, you know, the, the regular ones and the big mm. ones. But yeah. when it's a more subtle one like that, I could certainly see there being a lot of a lot of discussions around how should this be designed to make it actually clear to the player. Because that's mm. you don't want the player to feel like what happened just now was unfair, where they just couldn't mm. tell that there was an enemy that was different. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's definitely a, a big design challenge in lots of different areas of game development. But, you know, having a roster of enemies that you can clearly identify through silhouette mm -hmm. that they have different functions is is so important. And again, right. we're, we're working with our, our team and our concept artists mm -hmm. to make sure that that is really clearly identifiable mm -hmm. from all sorts of different levels of, of uh, distance. One thing you mentioned in there was uh, dismemberment. Like... Mm is that in the game right now what's 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 the plan around dismemberment because that so with the itch version again that was sort of made i don't know if we mentioned it before but uh that was made over four months as like a proof of concept itch um i guess to how of, different like, is the itch version to what was shown at avcon or is that the that same is version? the same that is the okay. same version yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay so you've seen that version of the game uh, now, internally, now we're working on sort of like multiplayer and everything and all these new demons. So that version is is a bit further ahead, but we're waiting for a couple more months before we show anything off there. Mm -hmm. um, going back to what you said before, just remind me. Yes. Um, what was what was the original oh, dismemberment. version before I went on? The, oh, dismemberment. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so in the, in the itch version right now, there's no dismemberment. But um, yeah, in the, in the version we're working on now... There will be uh, at least partial dismemberment of the demons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to say like what that's going to indicate gameplay wise, or is it just going to be a visual thing? It'll be a. It, there are mechanics around why you might dismember a demon from the waist down, for example. Right. Um, again, if you've played something like Zombies, you know there's the tactic of creating a crawler to allow you to move around the map and not have to worry about about um, zombies. Mm -hmm. So. That's definitely something we're looking into. And also, like, for special enemies, um, dismembering certain limbs to knock off a uh, bespoke weapon that they might be using mm -hmm. against you as well. So, yeah, we're just, we're developing, um, as Doom coined it, the destructible demon system uh, of our own. Mm -hmm. So we're looking into that, yeah. Right. I, I think of something like um, Dead Space, for example. Mm -hmm. Obviously a much slower game, but... Yeah. Dismemberment is like a very core part of dealing with encounters and that. Definitely. Mm. So yeah, no, just all of that stuff from a development standpoint is mm. um, it like adds so many elements onto the pipeline of how you right. create enemies. But you know, with a game like this, your your enemies and how you defeat them are, are part of the core concept of the game. So we really are pushing towards uh, making that as as right. tight as possible.